Cancel. Don't remember doing this at all. I can only hold myself accountable. Cancel. I object! Look how good my life is. So what else? Cancel me. Damn emotion is cancelled. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Impulsive. I wish. Ah, me too. Today we have a <laughs> guest. <laughs> Um, we couldn't get Logan Paul, guys. I, we tried. I'm serious. I, we tried so hard. He's my dream no. guest. One of my favorite people. Um, icon, pussy slayer. Adam Sandler lookalike. Sober king, impulsive host, Mike Malak himself. Hey, guys. Hello, Mike Malak. Hey. It's funny because everyone at Impulsive claps like with you guys when you clap. Yeah, well, two people clapping is enough. I got to say this right off the bat. Your, your set is probably like, as far as YouTube-based podcasts are concerned, this is the best set, hands down. Thank, Thank you. you. Like, dude, oh, like damn. these little cut cutouts. Tana Manjo loves Manjo. Plan Mike B. Black. Tana Manjo goes to he, catch. Yeah, if you really read them, they're very funny. Brooke so. wrote them all. <laughs> Isn't that like just so you know, they're like super, Actually, super yeah. funny. Yeah. And you also have a really good. She also has a really good green room. Yeah, Out, yeah. it's like a, it's like a, ba it's like a back deck like a uh, almost like a college uh where beer pong would be played is yeah you get a beer pong it. table for the back deck. that would be iconic that is but iconic. It, it was nice i sat out there and watched the episode before this one and uh me and david were just sitting there and the only thing you guys do the whole time is look at that screen <laughs> and so i want to so just for people watching this so you guys know there's a uh, monitor that shows all the different angles. I already talked to Paige, Tana's assistant, about this, and she said Tana will not, will not turn that television off ever under no. any circumstance. Ever. And Tana, I come here today to ask you, will you turn that monitor off? Fuck no! Listen to me. Listen to me. It's a, it's a distraction for you. I promise you, if you if you look here and at the guest. It will it'll produce a much better product product than you giving a fuck what you look beautiful, Tana. Thank always, you. Always. Always. Look at Mr. Impulsive coming on. He's got but 300 look, episodes under his belt. Always. And he's like, listen, Thank bitch, this you. is I, what you're gonna do. To be fair, Mike, I blew up for being a narcissist. <laughs> I have stared at the viewfinder from video one to video 500. <laughs> I think if you are watching the canceled podcast and you want someone to look in the fucking camera, go watch impulsive. I Mm. And I'm just so cute and gorgeous. I can't help it. Uh, hi, guys. I'll look in the camera. I'll try to look in the camera this episode. Is that a good middle ground? No, it's it's fine. Do whatever you want. I just wanted to fuck with you. No. I also want to apologize to your um, audience because I really, I, I know I always look like a slob. Name. Well, that too. But I always oh, that wasn't look, even the apology. I always look like a slob, but especially today. I was hiking, um, right. like literally right before this show. I love when, hiking. It, it was great. <laughs> Is there a story there? No, no I just, just love lying for no reason. Uh. <laughs> and just the idea of like how you guys used to kind of, you guys almost had like a little beef, a little podcast to podcast beef. So the idea of you just being like, I need water and her being like, I love oh, water. Water's my favorite. <laughs> just like trying to like get along with you so hard. Hey, you know, like beefs happen, especially I think that that beef was like a, a microcosm of most beefs in the world yes, because microcosm. because it was meaningless. It was based on miscommunication. It was, and a lot of people, I was gonna say that, a lot of people think I like, just like blatantly lied in the situation and we like cleared it up and it was like, why broke lie? But it's like, I I wholeheartedly believed what I was saying. And then as soon as I got my, <laughs> me. as soon as I got my facts straight, I was like, fuck, like. I'm, I try very uh, hard, diligently, whatever you want to say, to make sure that the stuff that I say is like, accurate oh so you're oh, not here not, not here, here at all because i want to break that and, and by the way you guys crush it and you guys i love that that yeah. style you guys weave a storyline you get people enthralled in it tana's what's tana doing today who's she fucking yeah. you know is she back with her ex like all that stuff it's just a different vibe from what you know what you guys do I, what you guys what i do sure. Lo logan definitely like with his different you know pursuits with with uh the wrestling now i the get boxing. It. there is a storyline there logan paul My can't lie life, for fun we he, can we get less viewers though. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that statement. Yeah, I feel like it's more important. Honesty is more important for you guys. I I, I do. Not that we're just like dishonest out here. No, we're just that, exaggerative and like we don't fact thing. check. I do correct, correct. Yeah. Like we're dramatic as fuck. But that's kind of, it's like watch two dramatic bitches discuss LA. Like that's kind of the premise of the whole podcast, you know? And I love that. By the way, we've gone in and out of our, our um, times like exposing ourselves and exploiting our sex lives for content. Yeah. And it used to be a ton of fun, but like recently, like I've, I, I, he he always told me he always thought it was Logan always thought it was funny that I would just like talk about anything. Yeah. And lately I found myself kind of like pulling back a little bit because I have stories that that like involve people with your crew yeah. even. Like, yeah. That I just don't even. Oh, I want one here. Can you give one here? 
I feel like it's gonna. There's gonna come a time where both of us just regret this so heavily. And That's it's like, what, like, what can me. you do? Take I, it back? No. Yeah. I understand for you. I've been doing this <laughs> since yeah. the womb. Like I'm I would, I would have to regret energy. my whole life. You know what I mean? Um, so Which you might at some point. I noticed that with you recently though, because I want. I've been watching the night shift for like two years now. I You've watch your every it. episode. I mean, I was on the night shift yeah. very early, but I've been watching it like since the jump, and I I, I tune in weekly. I'm not kidding. Um, and I noticed lately you've been trying to have more like long form, meaningful content in your vlog. And I love that for you. I seriously can't relate at all, but I love it for you. I think we all have. I think like whether it's me, whether it's George, obviously Logan has has really just continued to move towards the mainstream with the boxing, with the with the wrestling and with, you Drink know, all of his, and his and prime, and of course, busy. drink prime and all of his business pursuits. Um, but I think like at the very least, George and I in our content have wanted to st start to really infuse more of that value, obviously. <sighs> Uh, well, the, George has always been meaningful. He do, he does. He, Between Christian, you were awful. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Your growth is incredible, though. I think that you take criticism very well as well. Like I, I feel like in the early days of impulsive, like comments would be like a little less team Mike, and now they. I was telling Brooke today, like we were talking about this, like just to not let the comments like define you, but you know, use them as constructive criticism, but not let it define your self worth. And I think you're really good at that. I was even just thinking about that with you guys is like little scandal. I like someone who can kind of fake beef and fuck around for the internet and play, but it's not too serious to them. And I mean, I think, I'm like, I felt like that was like kind of real. No, it was a hundred percent real. I would never, I wouldn't you, have a fake beef. I, the no thing about it was like, knife. I would never, I would never, or even exaggerate it. I, I, I'm a person that steers clear so of, you guys would of say conflict you always. And because I want to be a person that others, well, I tried to, but <laughs> I want to be a person that other people look at and say, okay, if, if we are going to look at this guy, like, make no mistake, no matter what we do in our lives or how we try to make believe we're not role models, we have, by way of our platforms, elevated to a place where we have influence over people. And I like, know. we have to accept that that responsibility, right? And so I have tried to personally steer away from uh, conflict because I think it's a good example to other people that conflict is not how, is not, it does not, is not productive and does not lead to great things. I'm like, See, la, 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 I, la, la, la. I meant to say to her yesterday. She's like asking me like, we have to talk about this. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about that anymore. I want it's to... just problematic for no reason. Right. And she's like, Brooke, you have to like, and it's oh, like, I, I find myself like wanting come to for Josh Richards one no. time. No. My guy, come on. <laughs> um, no, I think that's bad. I, I have always kind of lived and thrived in chaos. So for me being the most authentic to my brand is being chaotic i agree with you beginning of my career to now i definitely hold a higher standard to myself of okay regardless of if you say you want to be a role model or not you are yeah facts um it's just what you have to accept so i try to be better you know but i it, i definitely am a very chaotic individual and it's hard for me to steer clear well it's also that. like it's also low-hanging fruit and it's and especially as it pertains to the internet and i'm like yeah it, and, and i get and <laughs> she's i get hungry. that i get that <laughs> it's very easy to, to grab that stuff and like i've been you know, invited into many beefs in my career and, and had a lot of different choose your own adventures as to how I could navigate each one of those. And generally series. speaking, I've always tried to to like take the higher road. Yeah. Um, and, can't, and I can't, I yeah. don't relate to you. But I'm also old. <laughs> Like you think, can you imagine if I was ever your age on the internet? I would be in a prison, 100%, like absolutely no oh, questions my... asked, 37. I'm an old You're man. 37? Yeah, I'm Don't an old man. Don't say it like that. No, you can, I'm a transparent, <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm 30. 37, Guys, you have so this? many years I'm left. I'm 37. <laughs> I'm my hair is thinning rapidly. Not that my, rapidly. My I, I supplement my testosterone with testosterone treatment. Fair. Uh, I, you know, uh, I'm I'm not very good at maintaining a relationship with one woman. Uh, I don't is that spend an old person thing. <laughs> no, but I'm just giving him everything. I used to smoke. He's crack. like I fuck bitches. I like, like, he's like, oh, he's just, one, he's like just laying it out oh, on the table. Because that's the thing about me. Like I don't I don't want to hide anything. I have absolutely yeah. nothing to hide. And I think that I think that the new direction of 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 creator i would love it to be transparency and authenticity across the board that. i do that i, I think that, that that's what i will say as much as you want to like be down on yourself i feel like you are very like lay it all out this is who i am I try sorry to be if you hate it sometimes but. it's a little much but i mean definitely transparent i know that's the problem with that is that like like we said we you can't really pull that back so it's like you say too much now and you might not want people to like know that later and it's like yeah. what do you do about that well, that was a big concern i'm just digging me. a hole so deep i'll never get out let's be real <laughs> but you um, may but you'll here's here's what you'll learn to do tana you'll you'll learn how to uh take it at, and, and provide it as a lesson to the viewer fair. do you know what that's i'm saying and, and give them a, a takeaway from it so yeah, like so fair. like when i wrote uh the fifth vital i had to come to terms with the idea of putting shit out there that i like the stuff we're talking about today is one thing and I'm okay saying, oh, my hair is thinning. I'm okay saying like, I, 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 I am not good at holding a relationship. It's a whole different thing to 
talk about like your grandfather struggling for help downstairs while you're smoking crack and like you yeah. can't help him. You know what no, I'm like, saying? Like, 100%. like not to get super deep, but like I love that. that shit tore me apart. Like yeah. that tore my fucking but it, heart you made a apart. Lesson. But I was able to say, yo, this is what I went through. This is the takeaway yeah. that cause, cause it's a very vulnerable thing to do. Exa Mike. Exactly. I, so there's a, it's a balance. Yeah. yeah. I was actually going to say with you, you were like, you need to make a lesson. I'm about like, I just signed my first book deal. Congrats. And so that's my first, my goal with the book for sure is definitely to actually like create some lessons from the things I've gone through versus just being a transparent asshole. <laughs> um, but I was, go but with that being said, one of my biggest inspirations with writing a book was your book. I, you know, you. I don't read a lot. Big she shock. Read, but she, the read it. she read it. I read your book. And I loved your book. I would read it again. And Thank we you. talked about this. We were at Tao uh, like a couple, uh, like a month ago at dinner, you and me. And I, I, literally we were at a table and this is rare for you. We were at a table full of bad bitches <laughs> and people with more clout than me. And Mike spent the entire dinner sitting with me talking about his book and talking about like, you know what, giving me advice for like what I'm about to embark upon. You also gave me kind of the, I don't know what you call it, but the spark notes of your second book, a bunch of, um, highlights of things you're writing about and your second book i got crazy. it i got it too i got a little a little bit of a, a little taste right yeah and it's it's incredible i think it's one thing that i think i've never seen from an influencer or a celebrity um i've seen influencers and celebrities talk about addiction but not a lot of people talk about it transgressing into other addictive traits such as in the hollywood world being like sex addicted yeah and your second book in my opinion you start to kind of delve into that the, the sex life of la and what that did to you and where you're at now and a what was it again it was a toxic world devoid of morals ripe yeah. with adultery yeah you know like you know that's where i'm going with the second book i think yeah. i think there's you know in part of the chapter that i read to you I talk about entourage and everybody yeah. always looked at entourage as this really good rep uh representation of what goes on in hollywood mm -hmm. and, I did. and well it was it was 10 percent yeah. Hollywood is is a, is a dark, dark place. Dark place. Yeah. And the shit that happens with the crossover of obviously the crossover right. that I'm extremely familiar with, but the crossover of, you know, uh, entertainment, porn, um, rampant drug use. And, yeah. and by the way, more than, anything, about more than anything, uh, uh, the generation of wealth. The generation of wealth in in Los Angeles is is wild, right? Yeah, and 100%. so it's it's when you combine all of those things, uh, it produces stories that that are unbelievable, unbelievable. And yeah. and and the goal of the second book is to tell those stories um, in a way that I'm that I'm able to also provide some sort of tangible uh, takeaway for the for the reader what do you to hope apply you to their life. I mean, I mean, from the second book. I mean, for me, just all I could let's just talk about that chapter for a second. I mean, there's a chapter where I talk about a really kind of fucked up sexual experience I had with a couple big porn and stars. And it's great. And, and I read it and it's great. Which, I was in yeah. town like, oh my, it's great. <laughs> I love, oh, I love your stories. Continue. With some underwater head and a Mac Miller line about, uh, I keep a freak bitch. Even when she underwater, she could deep throat. On, and, like, and that so, happened. <laughs> yeah, that so happened. insightful, truly. Yeah, truly. it was a great Mac line. Obviously, <laughs> two Mac lovers will Ma talk about that later. But, <laughs> I start uh, bawling on the podcast. But like, but like, you know, you present these stories and like people I'm sure know me as as this guy who does spend a ton of time with beautiful women and with porn stars and with girls of on a all sick different one, if you kinds. Will. I wouldn't call it that because it's always on. A sick one ends at some no, point. No, you're just Mine's on a sick really one. It's just a consistent. <laughs> yeah, you are sick. always it's just a sick. But, yeah. But the but the the takeaway from that is um, I say it like this, or at least my plan is around the structure. Uh, growing up, every man in the world uh, has this idea that it would be the best thing ever to be able to fuck every girl in the world. Like, yeah. like and Lil Wayne has songs about it. Like, mm -hmm. I wish I could fuck every girl, whatever. Right. Yeah. And guys grow up with this, with this thing. They're like, oh, I wish I could be a player. I wish I could, I could do this and I could do that. And yeah. a lot of my fans, a lot of the kids that, that watch my stuff are like, or Living young like adults. I watch, yeah. And they're like, wow, that shit's great. Yeah. Like that shit makes yeah. me miserable. Yeah. Like that's the story I'm trying to deliver. Like yeah. there's no love there. There's no, there's no affection there. There's no long lasting, uh, uh, goal family passion it's all it's devoid it's 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 not exactly it's an unfulfilling exercise yeah. and so like when you look at these people um when you look at bill zarian or when you look at like i'm sure even hugh hefner and i don't want to speak for dan and dan dan you know is a friend of mine and great is a guy. great guy but like generally speaking uh you know as a, as a general note people that live a life that that is ripe with different women every night are, are living unfulfilled from from a point of, of yeah, it's another addiction. And, and, yeah. and it does it mm. becomes a, another addiction and so um, where do you feel like i don't know 
you, I mean, because obviously with that being said, it becomes kind of a disassociative act. And you know what I mean? Just like another thing that you're doing that you're addicted to. And we actually, I started to try to touch on this with you at Jeff FM, but it just wasn't the time and the place. <laughs> um, what are your current thoughts now on after living a life like that? Like, cause I always think about this. I always think about the fact that like, I always say like, oh, I'm 23, my life's so crazy. One day I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna have a family and I'm gonna get married and whatever. But as time goes, you just laughing at that blatantly. Um, (laughs) But as time goes on, it's like you, you do become so accustomed and addicted and used to this lifestyle that you almost don't know how to live in the other one. Do you, like, how do you feel about your future and that sense and monogamy and what do you feel like is in your cards after living, you know, six to seven years in LA filled with, this lifestyle when it started way before that i mean i've been i've been having this type of relationship with uh women and and casual sex since i was probably 16 years old you know so it it wasn't you know there was i said another thing i say in the book or will is like a blue check just added more silicone you know what i'm saying like the girls before the blue check just weren't you know they they didn't have botox and fake tits but they were all you know like that was just my thing you should have tuned into the last podcast yeah trying to get more silicone seriously i really am (laughs) But it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, I, I guess, I guess how I'll put it is like this. I think over the past couple of years or over the past year, obviously I was in a relationship and a dedicated relationship. I didn't have any, you know, major troubles with, with the monogamy beyond the beginning, which, you know, you're laughing about, but like, <laughs> but like, I think, I think. <laughs> That's, that's also the trouble with this is getting serious with you because you are one of my like favorite people and besties. And I'll talk about that too. Um, but like, but like basically where I'm going with it is if you're, if, if you want, okay. So as an East coast person, I, I have always had trouble with manifestation yeah. because that's just not how we're bred. Like, we're bred it. to like fucking yo, work, do work, it. work. If you want something, go get it. I feel the same way. And, and, and so like as right now what now. I'm trying to do and the way I'm trying to look at it is if you want monogamy, start to think monogamously. So yeah. start to like, yo, like I've told myself for years now, like, yo, you're never going to be married. You're never going to have that kind of relationship because it's just not, you're not built for it. You know Do what you I'm saying? That? No, no. I was telling myself okay. that. And now recently I've been trying to like love myself into a position again where I'm like, yo, you are a good lover. Like you, like, you are, that, yeah. you're yeah. a caring friend. You're a caring person. You you're... were very in love with Lana. I saw a side of you that Absolutely. I didn't think existed. Absolutely. And shit. And I do think you're capable of it, but it's, just, it's all about retraining your brain, I guess. That's that's what I'm getting. And at. people don't really talk about that in LA, like the way, or even just like in this type of lifestyle, like retraining your brain, I guess. You well, know, the first thing you need to do is admit that the relationship that you're currently having with romantic uh, situations Encounter. and intimacy is a problematic. Yeah. I mean, if, if the, the way media has trained men is that if you live the life that I'm currently living, that you have won some sort of award and it's far the opposite. It's completely the opposite. And it's, 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 you know, like I said, a very lonely and unfulfilling Unfulfilling, life, you know? And so, and so the, 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 the way I present stories in the book is by countering what could seem as brags as lessons, because a lot of the stuff seem that the life we live seems very attractive. And a lot of it isn't a lot of it's not Brooke. Getting healthier can feel so overwhelming because all of the different equipment, programs, and supplements the wellness industry can throw at us. Unlike other programs, Noom Weight uses a psychology-based approach to help people better understand their relationship with food. It teaches them how to be more mindful of the way they eat and gives them the skills and knowledge they need to build long-lasting, positive habits. With Noom Weight, you'll take a path toward better health one lesson at a time. Their psychology-based approach helps you change the way you think about food and health rather than demanding you to change your entire lifestyle. Noom doesn't believe in restricting what you can or can't eat. Instead, Noom gives me the knowledge and wisdom you need to make informed choices that help you get closer to reaching your goals. I love Noom because it's all about fitting into my existing lifestyle. I love Noom's psychological approach because it is based on scientific principles like cognitive behavioral therapy, which helps people better understand their relationship with food and build sustainable habits that last a lifetime. Noom is about progress, not perfection, because everybody's journey looks different. Noom is grounded in science. It's at the heart of everything they do. They've published more than 30 peer-reviewed scientific articles that inform users, practitioners, scientists, and the public about how their methods work and how effective they are. 
With Noom, taking care of your health is empowering instead of stress-inducing. No need to fear ruining the whole program with one off day. Noom will help you get back on track. You decide how Noom weight fits into your life, not the other way around. 5, 10, or 15 minutes a day. How much time you want to spend on the app is completely up to you. Start building better habits today. Sign up for your trial at Noom.com slash Tana. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash Tana. Thank you, Noom. Thanks, Noom. It's a hard to explain to somebody outside of it, too, because you'll say things in a way that like it does sound like you're bragging and you're like, like, it's it's hard to speak, especially like, I don't know, how, like where you're from, if you go home and you're like telling people stories that seem very normal and it like, yeah, and it like, just what feels like thought? very like, like I'm just ragged of boasting, 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 100%. boasting. I yeah. know exactly. What you're, I know exactly what you're referring but to. But it's like, like you're trying to explain it in a way that's like, oh, this like kind of like, oh, it kind of sucks. Like kind of like. Yeah, but it's there's no and that's that's another thing, too. I think that's it's a very big dichotomy in Hollywood is it's like you you can never com really complain about this life because if you are, everyone is going to tell you you are so awful for complaining. Yeah, about we it. wouldn't so trade it. That's the thing. It's like yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't live a normal life if we could. But it, like, it's not what it seems like you said. It's so yeah. unfulfilling. You get here and you're like, OK, like I'm not excited by this like I thought I would be when I got here. Yeah, 100 percent. A that's lot of parts of it, too. It's not just it's not just intimacy and, and romanticism. You know, it's like everything. especially it's, it's especially an important story, too, because when you look at the desires, professional desires of kids and young adults out there, like it's something like 75 percent of them want to be a creator. They want to be a YouTuber. They so want to be an crazy influencer. because that would that was not even like us oh. growing up. It was never even like, yeah. I mean, for you, I guess. Yeah, but I was like the anomaly. Like it was a remote thing to want to be. But that now until the, this the, there's a thing. There's like a I forget, I forget what the percentage was, but like you ask like high schoolers or middle schoolers now and they all want to be YouTubers. a YouTuber, a like, gamer, a Twitch streamer. It's crazy. And, it's, and it's yeah. and by the way, like once again, like it's it's incredible. We're yeah, so blessed benefits. to be able to do it, but it's it's uh it's. The rewards counteract the cons, you know, but I mean, the cons are definitely there. I mean, to touch on that, I like that's what it was just making me think about. Not only does the sexual aspect of it become unfulfilling, but I just remember being in a time of life where it's like, I like no one should be 21 and feel like I've seen everything and nothing excites me and nothing makes me happy. And I could see anything in the world happen in front of me right now. And I was like, oh, dope. I've seen that. Like, you know what I mean? It, it, like you have to be out here. And like you said, learn to love yourself, to find security and happiness like in the in the normalcy. Well, again. you see it manifest yeah. in every person who has ever like had it all, like the Britney Spears, the Lindsay Lohans, like all the people who are young and like and, and achieve that where everybody is looking at what you're doing and you like they seem to have like all the money, all the fame. And it's like, no, like all of those people are unhappy. That's why most people turn to like crazy shit. I think that's do you feel like you got like turning to crazy shit out of your system? Yeah, I mean, that that's definitely one of the reasons why I'm able to navigate this city and this life with uh, a little bit more ease than the normal person, because I've, I have I have extremely high guardrails and protections for myself that I can't fall into certain things. And also, like, look at look at like the core downsides of this city and of this industry. I'm kind of protected against most of them. So, yeah. like, generally speaking, if you're a creator, or influencer, celebrity that comes in the city, uh, first and foremost, you're, you're, you have the potential to fall into to drugs and partying with drugs, right? Hi. So, I'm right. Getting a mojo. <laughs> no, but, but, but by yeah. the way, and also everyone else, right? Yeah. yeah. Luckily for me, like I have, can't do Been that. I don't have that. the, I don't yeah. have the ability to do that. It's not an option for yeah. me, right? Um, or they, or a lot of them get taken advantage of from a business standpoint. I was doing yeah. business, influencer business before I even made a fucking, before Instagram existed. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm -hmm. So like, That's crazy. I came into the city, I've never had a manager. I've never had an agent. Ever? Every to this, day? to this day, every half million, million, multi-million dollar deal I've ever negotiated has been negotiated by myself. If I need a legal team brought yeah. up, I'll pay them by hand, and they'll. That is so shocking. Me. Congratulations. It's, That's like well, 1%. I don't recommend that to anyone. No, but I it's do. Just I do because I have a background. I've so been like, so fucked on by people. That is oh, so. Sure. That is like the best. That's crazy because that's one thing in the world to take advantage of somebody like like. That's one percent of, of the city, though. Congratulations. Like, yeah, I mean, God, that's I, I mean, it's it gives me a really interesting angle and really cool understanding of the business standpoint because I was yeah. writing the contracts that I now read for myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so like that made it very easy for me. I'm actually awesome. right now just uh, getting into my first uh, agency contract. I won't say which of the big three it is today, but it's, it's the big three. It's, he yeah. says like, well, we know, like CAA, <laughs> no, WME yeah. and, and UTA. UTA, UTA sorry. Um, well, I'm going to guess it's not daughter. UTA because I forgot that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's smart. She's I smart. I don't want any beef with her ever. Oh, She'll ever again. me. So do you feel like you guys' beef was genuine? Like, were you both a little I, mad at each other? I did. Mike well, Maylock hit you. Here's the thing. Mike Maylock <laughs> punched me in the face. 
I did. That part's not untrue. I did. So it so was, we were at a part at a party at um, the Clyborne House, house yeah. at the Bieber House, and I think I'll I was ta- talking to Tan, and I like spun quick or something. No, like no, that. no. You guys were doing a handshake, and you both fu- you punched me in the face too. Oh, it was both you of guys us. decked me together, and we like pulled back, and all of a sudden she's like bleeding. And she and that lip bleeding. Right. Okay. And it was fun. Like it it really wasn't that big of a deal, but I needed I just you have to understand I needed attention in that moment. <laughs> it's Brock. <laughs> I did. I did. Okay. My lip is bleeding. Like pay attention to the fact that you guys just punched me in the face. That was like that was yeah. my mind. We got off yeah. to a very bad And start. then this uh, this and that other, was my first yeah, that was I think probably my first time ever yeah. having this, met you. Yeah. This other influencer girl comes up and I won't say when you guys are good friends now, but she comes up to the situation and you would just clearly like but it's dismissed. Not, but it wasn't like a purposeful dismissing it's kind of like me you're very adhd to party a million things going on like it just something was distracting you and you tried but you failed well, it's because uh, you guys were whatever. already like really engaged in a conversation so yeah. he was like okay we'll worry about that after it's done awful um but anyways this other really big influencer girl comes up to brooke and brooke's like oh my god my lip is bleeding no she comes up to tana you're awful at time. <laughs> sorry I've, everyone's just like, lying you inter- right now l- interrupt tana anyway she comes up to Tana. She's trying to talk to her. And Tana's like, hold on one second. Like, her lip is, like, bleeding. She goes, I don't fucking care. Uh, and <laughs> keeps talking. And I, was, I for months, I was like, that. They all heard that, too. <laughs> no. I'll, believe I'll believe it. it. I'll believe it. Well, it I, love love her her I love it her now. I love her now. It could be multiple. Yeah. No, but, yeah, we started normal. off on a, on a poor foot. But then, like, I think we, we hung out a couple times after that. And then um, you guys were... You guys were getting into the podcast together and yeah. you had a lot of questions for me one night about how business works between me partners. Rookie. I did. I w- well, I was That's asking- funny because I was going to Logan asking the same questions. You're going to Mike and I was asking Logan. Right. I was. Well, because we like, were the co-hosts that were brought in. So we have this fair. revelry together. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, Logan, yeah. do I pay her? And right. I right, 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 Yeah, right. I felt like I had like a bond with Mike because I was like, I can ask him these things because I felt like like in the beginning you had to have been in like a similar position. So I was like 100%. asking him all these questions. I was like, Mike's my boy. Okay. And then- of course like the whole situation happened and i like i really came on here and when like i said i really believed what i was saying like i love even it. if i you did know it. i love it see it's important it's it. important to note that even had it like had i had she told me like listen i need you to lie for me i would have done that too i don't care because <laughs> listen if she tells me i need i need you to say i did this i will i will say it are you guys friend. are you guys friends now are you guys no us no, 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 I love no. her. I love that girl so much. And yeah. I will like, you know, she did yeah, so much for me. The whole situation was really sad because I really oh, do, oh. I really do, really care about and respect that girl, and um, and she she's a sweetheart. I I I prefer not even to talk about it today because I, I did because I did meet with her after and and she was very yeah. upset about the situation. You know, she, and no, I, she I is, and that, that see, that's why I felt so affected. By, that's why I felt like I had to come on here and defend her because I like. <laughs> She, I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, like no. you said, it's, it's not yeah. good to talk about it, but just know that she is a good person in general. Yeah. Did that one hurt you to say? No, she, is, she, she really is. I just speaking of hurting to talk about someone being a good person, I wanted to revisit this earlier when we were discussing your love life situation. I'm just dying to know. We've had some conversations about this, but I and I think it's a fun podcast topic, and I just want to know, and I and I want to have a little fun day. And, well, just say it already. All right, I just want a little lead up, guys. Get excited. <laughs> um. Miss Amara, yeah, Miss Lana Rhodes. Great girl. Where do things stand now? You are not the father, yes? Well, no, yeah, not not the dad for sure. I think that's I think that's already been confirmed. Yeah, been confirmed just by yeah. the overall look, look of the style child, of yeah. the child. Oh. <laughs> not, the st- not the style of the child. He doesn't wear the same kind of clothes as me. He's, he has more style than me. <laughs> he um, definitely has better hair. Would you ever sure. get back together? Uh you know, I you never. I, feel like I never. She's the one for I, you. I never say never about anything, but I at this at this current moment, like it's 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 off the table. I, I we um, you know, we did this little dance post relationship where we As were gonna does. be friends. No, well, even beyond that, because of course we had that whole dance where it's like the toxic like. You know, we're going to make this work and then the fighting and all that stuff. But then even after that, where we were like, okay, let's like do this kind of for content a little bit or just like see if we could just be friends. You know what I'm saying? And like, let's just see how this works out. So hard to be friends with someone you love. You know, it's I figured out I tried to tell all the the people in my audience that it's possible. And it really is kind of hard. It really is. I I I was just going to ask you, I I don't I don't know if it is. I mean, for me personally, I don't think it is possible. I'm learning that. But that's the thing you have to for me, I would have to remove myself from the situation and no longer feel like I love this person or like am in love with this person for me to 
be able to be your no 100 percent. and like i'm learning I've, that because yeah. i have exes from you know olden days where like you talk to him now and it's like dude so good catching yeah, up yeah and, and you bro. are genuinely yeah. so you know, like interested yeah. to know but it's like it takes time for sure yeah 100 but we but we um you know I, i'll still always check in yeah. or she'll that's the check thing. i do in, think it's very know. admirable how supportive you've been like even so, like when she was pregnant yeah, to anyone now. i dated would be like yo fuck you that's and that the thing. baby and i and i feel like <laughs> to me like like where i am right now i if like one of my guys like went off and had a baby i would not you know i, I you know we'd already been out of the relationship for such a long period of time. I think like, you know, even even when it came to the breakup video or like the stuff when we really you started to like, talk about, we had already so, uh, so, so she, full transparency, she really hadn't. And, and she, she had the right thought and was holding on and, and saw a future and saw like a lot of positive things. And I just, we, we, we had disagreements and we had reasons why yeah. it just wasn't going to be a good fit. And I think I was uh, a little bit quicker on the decision-making process to get out of it. And so, and so like, you know, it, it was, it was easier for me to disconnect yeah. after the relationship ended. And um, so then when she got pregnant, um, You'd it already was, kind of been in the mode. Yeah, I mean, like I was, sealed, I was, the deal, honest, put it in the I was round. in shock, obviously. Like, of I was, I, I was just like, "What the fuck? How did this happen?" Yeah. But also at the same time, like, you know, she, the girl has had already accomplished so much, had already put so much money in the bank, had already traveled to every fucking country in the world. It makes and sense. And she was, she's very motherly. She wanted a kid. She's it was very like motherly. she was telling me every, "I want to have a kid. I want to have a kid. I want to have a kid. I want to." So when and she good gets for her, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. When she has a kid. I'm happy for you. What can I do to help you and the kid? And that's big. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of where I was. So I moved her out to Chicago and now she's like in New York or something. I think that's a good story arc for you and your maturity too. That was really a point where you really showed the world your maturity. I think it's funny because you're saying all this and it's so valid and I couldn't agree more. But it's funny because like I sit here as like at one point I really was a stan of you guys as a couple. And I think that we don't talk about enough like how affecting it is on you when you're in a major, massively publicized couple that everyone is in love with, trying to date again after that. Trying to yeah. like, chase, <sighs> like even just chase that feeling of being like on top of the world well, with someone else. Well, the it's situation is made dramatically more difficult when mm -hmm. the last person you dated is considered to be one of the most desirable people on the planet. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it's 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 become slightly problematic for me because it's like shit. I you know, I hate to say it like this, but it kind of like sets you up for. I feel like you kind of have to like hit a certain caliber. I completely. Is this do, seems do weird to say that way, like though? Because like immature in an immature way, yes. In an immature, like an ego way, so, ego social media owned way, yes. And, and when so that's like, your business and your life too, it's like I complete, I completely understand. I do. That's hard too, though, because like from the other side of it, anybody who's going to come in to date you is going to be so just by default insecure. In my opinion. that is now, I've already dealt with that. I've yeah. already dealt with that a ton of times, and I've had girls that I've started like these kind of slight relationships with, or like you know when you get into a situation where you've you know you've had sex with the person a few times, now you're like, yo, let's go get. Yeah. Well, technically, should have. You're supposed to start with dinner, dinner, but first. yeah. Fuck. I really but, like, you're trying, I Mike. So I you're really trying, trying, Mike. You're so. trying. But like, but like, yes, that is definitely a situation. Like, dude, like, the whole world knows who your ex is. Like, generally yeah. speaking, like, you're able to navigate through the beginning of a relationship with kind of an unknown situation about who the person's prior lovers are. Like. No, it's hard. It's, it, it is very yeah, hard. It just they, adds they know, another like, dynamic. Because there's always going to be some subconscious like part of you that is going to compare. I mean, maybe, maybe 100%. not. 100%. For, like, I don't know. But it's I've like, learned, but I've learned that, that, that is, that is so childish it's and stupid. The devil. And, and, yeah. you know, I've, I've, it, the, the relationship has taught me so much. You know what I'm saying? It really has taught me so much. And like the, the, it, it kind of was, you know, not to sound like, like, kind of like a male douchebag or a dick or whatever. But for me, it was kind of like the cap on my desire to want to be like, with people for looks because no, I was like, okay, that, now where do I go? Like, where do you go that's from a there? Real where it's thing. I think people like try to get that out of their system. I've had that like this same, like a similar conversation with a lot of like my guy friends. It's like at a certain point, you're going to settle down with someone probably that like superficially isn't someone even that you like would have 
wanted to go for you know five years ago yeah. like, because, because you learn it's more because uh, yeah n- none of that fucking matters and like at the i mean but literally none valid. that's the thing like of course you have to have like a sexual attraction to your partner mm-hmm. and that's not a question right but like the 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 actual like Connection. value of of looks in a relationship is so, so meaningless yeah. because because they fade or they or or and and that's not even the reason why the, the things that you're looking for in a partner are are, are are enduring factors and ability to cheer you up on a day, a trustworthiness. Understand now, you. now, now the thing is, is like f- the reason why I was in that relationship was because she also exhibited many of those yeah. factors. Like she's, like, I feel like she's very, like she's an example of someone who's beautiful, but like very smart, very like smart. And then the biggest thing with her, which, which is like, I think the only way I probably find this again would be either outside of the city or just like someone that's not on the scene is her loyalty was on was there wasn't a single person in the world that could have got her to look away from me if she was staring into my eyes. Yeah. You know what I'm oh. saying? Like this girl, this girl was well, don't just break just my like- heart in <laughs> half right now for the love of God. Call her back, Mike. But no, it's not, but that's not but once again, that's one vertical. Yeah. That's one vertical. Well. So so like let me throw this out there. If you find someone who's fiercely loyal, but is also Jealous. semi-jealous yeah. or like not saying that she was, but like you know, semi-jealous yeah, or, 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 you know, has the occasional desire to watch it all burn. Like who knows? Right. Or, yeah. or, or, so one thing I've been looking for in a, in a mate lately is someone that I can bring to events or someone that I can bring out with me. I'll be transparent with this one and say, Amra, uh, Amara, whatever you want to call her, like however you want to say it, was, well, Joe, was, 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 very, was very focused on uh, that home life that she was trying to curate for herself and that family life. And you weren't. I charge paid. up off going out and meeting people yeah. and networking and and being in a room and shaking hands and meeting this person and how, yo, how can we work together? How can we get money together? Blah blah, so on and so forth. And so there has to be a. I kind of wanted someone that could do that with me, to yeah, be honest yeah. with you, and that could come out and like say I go on like a group vacation with you know your two lovely boyfriends and we're skiing and i say girls like you got we're gonna go do some like gnarly shit like where we jump off a cliff guys go shopping i'd want them to be able to like have like a cool relationship together and so yeah yeah i don't know no i mean that's a realistic thing though because it it does have to fit into your life like as much as it's like okay i could find just like a normal person who does normal things and like that'll be like that's how i'm going to settle down it's like you you still live this life you're like obviously very successful person and in like the creator that's definitely my like biggest thing is yeah you have to understand my life amazing like you can can go find out like find a financial advisor or something but it's like realistic he's gonna hate everything i do (laughs) yeah current is the future of banking where you can spend save and manage your money all from your phone Current is the best way to bank. With Current, you get points for cash back, two days faster direct deposit, and no overdraft fees up to $200. Just think of what you can do with the additional cash you save by using Current, like buying a pair of jeans. (laughs) True. (laughs) Brooke just bought $40 jeans. I thought it'd be a funny joke. It wasn't. (laughs) Traditional banks are awful with the fees, long lines, and clunky apps, so why not make the switch to Current? It's simple to get started with no minimum balance requirements, no lockup periods, and no fees to get started saving. Get paid up to two days faster on direct deposits because most banks hold your money for up to 48 hours. Earn up to 15 times points on every swipe, redeemable for cash back rewards. Manage your money better. Current has helpful spending insights and notifications to track where and when you're spending. Easily create savings goals and round up purchases to save extra change. And for a limited time, we've partnered with Current to give away $1,000. That's right. Current is going to give away $250 to four listeners right now. All you have to do is download the Current app at current.com slash Tana. Remember, that's current.com slash Tana. Winners will be awarded at the end of April, so don't wait. Download the Current app and be entered to win at current.com slash Tana. No purchase is necessary to win. Purchase won't increase chances of winning. Void where prohibited. Eligibility restrictions apply. Visit current.com slash Tana for full terms and conditions. Current is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services provided by and Visa debit card issued by Choice Financial Group. Member FDIC. The current annual percentage yield is variable and may change at any time. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you, Current, for sponsoring today podcast um it just wasn't oh. the right fit like simply put it just wasn't the right fit it wasn't the right fit at, at that time it wasn't the right fit for us to to, to go on so so now what you are know. you doing well <laughs> who are you fucking well what you doing shit i mean i want to get impulsive here i want like some I well you know i've shit. never been one to like go out and just start dropping like names and shit like that but i mean it's you know we're trying to do less of that as well seriously yeah i've never I mean, been like I that mean, I, I you know i've been um 
Have you been yeah. seeing anybody? No, nah, not really. You know, I have. Do you have a crush on uh, someone's heart just got nah, broken. Someone's watching this. Like, mm, fuck. Nah, and yeah, for sure, like that. That's the that's the thing. But I'm I'm you know I'm very upfront yeah. and straightforward with the girls that I have. I wish I got with. that. I'll have guys be like, I don't fuck with that. I think me that's neither. I think it's disgusting to uh, to, to break people to fuck with people's hearts. I I'm, it's funny because my mom is is honestly my biggest role model. You know, mm -hmm. and and honestly, like there's no one that's even close. Like she she is like the leader of of the majority of decision making I, I I have. And that includes, you know, kindness towards people, empathy, compassion. And she she taught me, she taught me a number of things. She told me when I was very young, no tattoos, uh no motorcycle, no motorcycles, <laughs> and no cigarettes. And she missed a few ones. She didn't tell me about <laughs> she heroin. She should have said heroin. She probably. didn't say crack, mom. Where were you on those ones? But she my also, mom said heroin and crack. Yeah, smart. Was, but but she also no, my mom. Oh, well, never mind. She but she also like very early on told me not to play with people's hearts. Oh, because you know my parents divorced and she probably dealt with a, a fair amount of that type of activity. And so yeah. um, it's something that stuck with me. I'm I'm just super upfront with girls. I'm like, yo, listen, like even if like. We go on a trip together, like any of that kind of stuff. I'm like, yeah, just like, you know, I do I've admire had fun, that though, because you you go with these guys. Like, I have I've had guys just like play house. You know what I mean? It's like you're act like you act oh, like yeah. a boyfriend. You talk like a boyfriend. We like you know. Yeah, and then we go to Miami together, and you're like fucking a bitch, and I'm like, that's what, what I'm saying. That's yeah. not based on true events. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm like still pissed. Uh <laughs> but I think, but I think er, to, to the point that we made earlier on with like uh, manifesting and direct and like your direction lately I've been making a really uh, trying to make a better effort to not even do that kind of casual stuff because it kind of sets up like a precedent. It, well, it, well, well, not only that, but it puts you into that behavior stream. And so yeah. if, if your behavior is okay, cause by the way, like there was a while where I had it down to a science, like, yo, we're going to this bar. We're getting, you know, tacos. You're getting, we're having margarita, like whatever. Right. Like, yeah. and then, and then, you know what I'm saying? This happens, X, Y, Z happens. And it, it, it's just like, it's this unfulfilling cycle of just like, and by the way, there's a lot of men that can relate to the story that I'm telling yeah. you right now. Like you yeah. fall into this fucking cycle of just like these meaningless relationships no, I relate. <laughs> and it's convenience. Yeah. 100%. You know, so lately I've been trying to not even do that and just, and just be like, okay, very transparent. And what before, before I hang out with a girl, do I like this girl enough to have a conversation with her with absolutely no potential for sexual intercourse? Yeah. Do I have the, do I have uh, enough, important. you know, like, though I feel like this girl is knowledgeable enough to hold a conversation Would I want her to meet my mom. Like I'm starting to have those, those yeah. conversations with myself before I hang out with her. Congratulations. Or like a little precursor, just a <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> avoids insane. conflict. Honest to God. I mean, I do think after all of this, I would love to see you be a father, though. I do. I think you'd be a good dad. Oh, I feel like you'd be the best dad. Yeah. Yeah, because you're very, you know, you like, you do your little, like, I think you'd give good lessons. You've lived a life. You give and, me like, very TED Talk. Yeah. And like, you know. <laughs> That's where I'm trying know. to go. You're like outdoors. You could you do a TED Talk, shit. no problem. I've already got, I got invited to do TEDx, but I didn't do it because I have that? a supreme problem with mental illness called anxiety have you guys heard of it oh i've heard of it yes <laughs> you it's we were talking about that on jeff fm i think it's perplexing that you do as much as you do like live shows and shit without like with anxiety and still doing it it's all imagine day. though how much we could do like in life if if anxiety like just didn't exist like how much how like how many limitations i've been trying that's another thing i've been like honestly the this year and even like every year is but this year especially has feel, felt like a, a a developmental year and, a, and a, a year of growth for me where like even on that tip i'm i'm finally starting to work on it yeah. and um and and With this will go on to the next book to, no, I can't how do you do any it of that stuff obviously good but for like, you the only thing i could do is i've had my ons and offs with um SSRIs and SNR or SS, SS, SNRIs. Um, you know, I've tried all that stuff and, and nothing ever really worked. So now I'm not on any uh, kind of medications like that lately, but I've been trying to like find a bunch of different coping tactics for it. Cause, cause honestly, like for me, it's, it's not something that, uh, it's not something that like pops up and is like on and off where it's like, okay, this is going to happen. This is something I deal with pretty much all day long. You know, from yeah. the second I wake up until the second I go to it's bed, hard. it's a cycle of, you know, negative thoughts or a cycle of, um, you know, you're not good enough. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. Like you're, you're here because of this, because of that. And it's, there's nothing 
that is more dangerous of a habit than conditioning your mind into that type of yeah and of it's like it's pattern. just constant so yeah. it's like all, all day and so like and so like yes it really starts to like manifest into into physical symptoms prior to Definitely. big shows live audiences speaking gigs stuff like that and it sucks because yeah. it's 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 to an extent, you know, handcuffed me on a lot of that stuff because I have had a lot of really big speaking opportunities because of the book, especially. Um, but I, but I, you just have to turn down just because of that. What's that? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Do you it's feel hard. Like, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was gonna say like like because I've done like the whole antidepressant thing like and stuff like that, and it's it's hard. I feel like now I don't know like when what your time period was with that, but like now thinking about it, I'm like, how do I if at this point I felt like I really needed to do that? It's like. Now we have these jobs that are dependent on us having a personality. Yeah. And like, I mean, you've never taken saying- anything like that, but I like my experience with like, I, I did Lexapro too. Um, I did Wellbutrin. Wellbutrin was my like, like I landed it, on it that one. It worked for you? Oh, well, so well. Wellbutrin's a, fu- a, a shit show of a drug. It, it, so you, so then you definitely have underlying depression Yeah, well. so my, mine was for depression. Got I never it, had anxiety it. until oh, honestly come, I moved Oh, got there. it. Because yeah. Wellbutrin's the, the I, I, they tried it on me one time. Sorry, sorry, go no, ahead. No, you're fine. They tried it on me one time, but it made me flip out because it, it's for depression, it, so it elevates whatever is going on in your mind. Yeah, as see, mine to, was very much, dep- like the, at the time that I was taking it, it was depression only. I had no anxiety at all, got which it. is crazy. I didn't like have any understanding of that at all i like whatever but it it worked for what i needed it for at the time like at the time it was like i I, like i I, it was non-negotiable i needed to have that however no personality like i was i wasn't making jokes i was i was i was yeah Yeah, yeah. and it was the trade-off and it was worth it it to me to not feel the way that i did but if i had that now like i could i couldn't have a podcast i couldn't do what i do because it's like no sense of humor no like and so I'm thinking like now, if, if, if I were to come there now, it's like, what, like, what would we do? I relate yeah, to you so, so much on, on a lot of stuff, oh. Brooke, like, honestly, like that specifically, um, because <laughs> I have, have always had that option as well. I've always had the option to go back to effects or to go back to Lexapro and it would allow me to live, uh, a little bit of a happier life and be a little bit more peaceful with myself, but it would also deteriorate my ability to uh, go from topic to topic, be snappy, yeah. quick, be witty, yeah. make jokes, talk about like having Crazy. a train of thought that's very, um, you know, you know, uh, always, always on and aware. And, yeah. and it's 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 fucked up because at the end of the day, what it comes down to is us and our desire to trade our peace of mind and our happiness for, for the audience and for and 100%. for success and for the industry i and always it's, say that it's it's it's, it's like, kind of fucked but um if i was heavily medicated i would be far more mentally stable but i would like forsake so much of what i have i've always always said that like right. obviously it is to a certain a extent like we benefit a little from like my from, own career from the little quirks we have no, no, for if sure. i wasn't manic i'd have nothing no like you're... you know what i mean if i took away that mania with medication i really do think i wouldn't because like that's where I'm, yeah and there's something to be said Obviously, like you, you it's need sad. to be it's able to identify and acknowledge when it's like it's too far and like I, I like I need to fix this. Mm-hmm. But like at, at a certain point, as long as you have like some kind of balance, like I feel like I do benefit like the ADHD, like all of that part. I like I'm like, oh, I like that. It like it helps me. It's like it's fun. It's it funky. Does. Like I'm because I, I don't that. have a sit down job where I like I, where I'm required to like right, sit right, and right. do something all day long. Like that's not. Yeah. You need, like, so I'm like, great. Around. I think the message from it, too, for like people, because one thing I've noticed, obviously, having written the book and talked about this on every podcast and people know, you know, that I, this is something that I suffer from. I think like the takeaway from it is like kind of what you just said and both of you guys just said, which is that your quirks are what make you 100%. your quirks are what make you who you are. Like me, me not being this like random, like fired up, like psycho, like yeah. that, then my personality has gone. And yeah. now I don't have that thing that makes me who I am. This like kind of over the top, like energetic, high energy, yeah. positive Same. person that makes feel people that. feel good about, you know, when I walk in a room, like my goal is to elevate the situation and yeah. make people feel happy and make people smile. Right. So like, uh, th- that's not to that's not to say that I have anything wrong with uh, that. There's anything wrong with meds, and I think some people, like you said earlier, at that time it was important to you. And yeah, I think they're yeah. I think for certain people they're important. But lately, I've been looking for coping tactics, and for anybody watching this out there, that and I'm sure there's a lot of you guys that suffer from uh, any kind of anxious canceled. condition. Yeah, you're suffering <laughs> in general. Stop. <laughs> Get in. I'm you. sorry. I got bad jokes. You're not, no, that was funny. And I appreciate your motivational. I need I need to be doing that. More. That was really funny. Do. No, uh, um, but but just these these quick tips. I would just say, um, 
Cerebral is an online mental health service that offers prescription medication, counseling, and therapy for anxiety, depression, ADHD, insomnia, and more. One of the most important ways to take care of yourself is through mental health, and you can start right now with Cerebral. Cerebral is one of the few services that provide prescription medication online through a licensed provider and ships medication straight to your door. With the Cerebral mobile app, you can literally pull out your phone and do everything you need on the app, whether it's to text your counselor or to schedule an appointment with your therapist. It's like having a personal care team wherever you are. You can schedule sessions based on what is most convenient for you. You don't have to wait weeks to be seen, and you can do your sessions on a laptop or a phone so you can always find an area where you are most comfortable. Cerebral is affordable and they offer treatments that are one third the traditional cost of therapy. Treatment options are available with or without insurance. Cerebral is in network for several insurers and they're working every day to grow their partnerships. Even if you're out of network, they'll provide you with the necessary paperwork so you can easily submit a claim. For listeners of the Cancelled Podcast, you can receive 65% off your month of medication management and care counseling at Cerebral.com slash Tana. Go to Cerebral.com slash Tana for 65% off your first month. That's just a total of $30 to get started. Join Cerebral today on their mission to make quality mental health care accessible and affordable for all. Thank you, Cerebral, for sponsoring today's podcast. Just these, these quick tips. I would just say... um exercise cardio for me it doesn't work for everybody but cardio has always been a uh, i have to work out every day if i don't work out in the morning i won't survive literally <laughs> i love hiking <laughs> yeah that works right and water and but yeah, everybody water. doesn't need it maybe you guys don't need it <laughs> no 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 there was a point in life where i was doing cardio every day and i was far a happier person looked way better too seriously figured it out yeah um you're not wrong there are so many like little things you can do yeah there's a sure. lot of right, steps right, before right. medication cardio, like for yeah. sure like, especially like routine and like shit like that really does help and i like, find huge, myself true. I find myself down on myself for that a lot because I'm like, fuck, you should just like literally be working out every day or taking these supplements or drinking a lot of what, like a lot of those things really do help a lot. So I, I do validate that. I feel no, that you're right. But, but routine in general, boundary, setting boundaries for yourself. If you, have you ever noticed that when you do something, if you, if you suffer from anxiety or even depression, if you do something far outside of your comfort zone or outside of your boundaries, have sex with a, a random person, have sex with an ex that you didn't want to have sex with, over drink, over eat, over do, overuse drugs. Have you ever noticed that next like, day your anxiety yes, is, yes, yes, is yeah. 800? Hundred times yeah. higher Super. because you're walking Super. over boundaries that you've set for your personal self, and that you when it's you when you overwalk. But those, that's true. It's... The fulfillment, like it, like just the thought of like like not wanting to do something and actually not doing it, it makes you like brings you back down. It's like, the, yeah, yeah, some level of discipline. Um, but then the the last thing I'll say is just the one that I've really been working on for this year, and and the one that every leader, every business, uh, you know, uh, enthusiast or entrepreneur or any successful person does is constantly talks positively to to themselves. And, and that is so important in the management of those negative thoughts and that cycle and that pattern is to tell yourself the things that, and to view yourself the way that you want to be viewed by others. And so, um, at some point your, your, how you think about yourself will eventually align with how other people think of you. So that's just where I've been. Yeah. You're not wrong. You're Tana laughs at me. Sorry. I like, cause you know, there's people who do their like affirmations or whatever. They get up in the morning and they're like, I am beautiful. I am strong, whatever in the mirror. And it works for a lot of people. But for me, I'm like, I could never, right. but Tana, like, we'll be getting ready and Tana that will make fun of me. Cause the whole time I'm like, holy shit, she's gorgeous. Like, <laughs> oh my God. And that's like the only, the whole time. No, but it's good. It's good to build yourself. I'm up. telling Brooke's you. delivery of it, it is works. just very comedic i can't even lie i'm like have you ever seen someone so beautiful so fucking gorgeous i just want to <laughs> girls the girls are awesome for that like Seriously. they hyping each other up nobody no guys like really do that enough but logan's the king of the the manifestation he he, he he's better than anyone at that he's, he's got notes to himself to yeah he's got notes to himself on the mirror he's got you know like he's just he just is always talking that way to himself i feel like i want to get like so i'm bad. i'm still at a point right now where i take my or i like I don't want to say take myself too seriously, but I, I still like it, journaling to me still feels very like, oh, like, I would yeah, love yeah. to journal. I, honestly, I struggle with that. My biggest form of motivation and this is so dark is negativity. Like mm -hmm. if I read a hate comment, like that would motivate me 10 times more to be better. Oh, I and I need to talk them. about this in therapy sincerely than like a no, positive a, thought. If I tell thing, myself though. like you're a failure, I'm 10 times better of a person that no, day that's than if I told myself you're a winner. Like yeah. A lot of people feed off of uh, negativity. My, what do they say? My haters are my motivators. But even just to myself, <laughs> yes. like if I wake up. I think up, like Gandhi said that or something. If yeah, I or literally wake like up and I'm like. like Ross Perot or Obama. You're not wrong. Yeah, Michelle. I could sincerely wake up and tell myself like you're a winner. You're so rich. You kill it. Like da da da. And all day I'd be like, 
I'm a winner. I'm so rich. I don't have to do shit. <laughs> but like, if I'm in the mirror, like you're a fucking failure, like whatever, then all day I'm like, I need it. Like, I don't know what yeah. it is about that. No, I get that. You were earlier, I wanted to touch on this again, but you were talking about how you suffer with depression until LA. And then that's kind of what manifested your anxiety more was being in this city and being here. Do you feel, did you feel a significant change being in Puerto Rico and potentially moving there compared to LA? Do you, how much of your issues do you feel like or directly hand in hand with that life. Nah, I've always had it. I, if anything, like to be honest with you, like it's been an underlying problem my whole life, and was, and was actually a massive uh, precursor and reason for me to use drugs. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. drugs quieted my mind. They made me feel. Uh, y- I'm sure you guys know this. That like who can relate? I was a huge fan of euphoria yeah. so like i was a massive euphoria fan and it was for various reasons but there were some lines in that uh in that show that that really 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 Same resonated with me to a Rose point where monologue. i was like i loved what you were doing i'm sorry to cut you off but like what you were doing explaining how realistic that was because like i know that was for sure your experience was like from you more as like the point of rue yeah. i i experienced that as more of like her little sister because like I grew up with it. Like my parents were sure. both addicts. Yep. That's what's crazy about Euphoria, though. Is that yeah, but, that, but that's the thing. But you, do, like, I felt real. If you have never experienced it yourself, I don't think you can like appreciate the show for what it was because it is so realistic. That was a yeah. really tough. I mean, to that point, I mean, that was it was a really tough watch for myself, and it was also a very tough watch, tough watch for my mother and my little sister. Yeah, um, who resonated dramatically with the characters that you're talking about, Rue's mom and Rue's sister, because mm-hmm. they were. I mean, I mean, some choice. of that stuff was exact. I mean, some of that stuff was no, exactly. like it was where, where, where she was where she was ruining the house, looking for the suitcase. trash and shit. That, and the whole scene is like it's like they called me and it was I think it was episode <clears> four, <throat> season two, and they called me and they were like, "Yo, we we don't think that's a good idea. That you watch tonight." And I watched it and like I mean that episode f- really fucked me up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like really fucked me up because. Yeah. You know, the pain that an addict uh, produces for their family members is kind of the last thing that you ever get over. And it's something that I still struggle with quite a bit. It's like you a know? guilt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've kind of forgiven myself. But you're myself. not you. It dry, it's driving the boat. <clears throat> but it's yeah, but, but people, I mean, I, they understand that Bad too. Time I mean, for drink? me at least. For me? No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> No, but 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 that that show like um they did a great job on it and and, and so like there was one line uh Sam, Sam Levinson incredible you know writer producer just incredible and um there was a there was a part of it where she said um she was talking about the first time she ever got high after her dad died and she said or maybe it was before but it was at some point around there and she said it was the only time I had ever felt safe in my own mind. Valid. That was how she described it. And That's for valid. someone like me to hear that, it was probably one of the most meaningful pieces of cultural work that I've ever seen because there was I nothing I really related with more than that. That was why I started doing drugs. It was to quiet the thoughts. It was to yeah. make the thoughts stop. It was to make that feeling of there, worthlessness right? or insecurity or whatever kind of quiet down. Um, and so, you know, that show is incredible. That show is incredible. And so a lot of that's so so to, to your question, um, that stuff is always there. You know, has LA, LA actually, to be honest with you, has for me has been a little bit better, has made things a little bit better for me. And I'll tell you why. If you suffer from insecurity, if you suffer from feelings of worthlessness, if you feel if you suffer from self-confidence issues or any kind of those anxieties or, or negative self-thought or OCD, um, the the greatest thing that can ever happen to you is to be validated. The yeah. greatest thing that can ever happen to you is to have people say, holy fucking shit, this kid is special. Wow. This kid is special. That's this true. book is has saved thousands of lives. It is five star rated. It is the highest rate, one of the highest rated books on Amazon and Audible. This kid has <laughs> fucking done on this. It, do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, and so no, when, when yeah. it took You're right. I agree with that. putting out works that I was fucking proud of. Yeah. And that other people were proud of for me to be like, holy shit, maybe there is a reason for me to be confident. Myself. I agree with you 100 percent. My first sense of validation was definitely being in L.A. Like I never felt that growing up ever. And you're actually me too. very in right. just like a sense of like, no, like, I, I don't know if you felt this way, like in Vegas or whatever, but like in Arizona, I always knew that I wasn't supposed to be there. And so coming yeah. here that helped Imposter with a lot of like, syndrome. Yeah, yeah. Where I just yeah. like, I knew that I wasn't supposed to be in this place and like, I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. So even coming here be- long before yeah. I ever was doing anything that I thought that I should be doing, I just felt like more at peace. Cause yeah. I'm like, okay, like That's I did sad. something. 
Wait, so you're right. That's, I guess, my first sense of like peace with my life and its purpose was seeing the physical manifestation of people telling me like, oh, you changed my life. Oh, your yeah. shit is yeah. your shit resonated with me. Yeah. That was like the first time where I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't kill myself. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So I, I completely agree with that, that there is something about L.A. that validates your your purpose. And it doesn't have to if you're doing this. It doesn't have to be L.A. I mean, yeah. it was L.A. for me, but it was like I, yeah. like I said, I you know, to, to the to the point of it, it's like especially when it was related to uh value based praise like the podcast yeah. the podcast is so like when people tell me they watch the night shift I, I love creating content for the night shift the burger reviews anything that makes you forget about your day and 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 laugh yeah. for a little bit so I if you want, YouTube I feel that great right you want to make one person the podcast a level up from that where people say yo we watched your interview with Dana White we watched your interview with Arnold Schwarzenegger we watched your, or we watched your boys only episode you guys hit some really tough fucking topics you talked yeah. about a lot of really good stuff you put out an episode about about George Floyd that made people really fucking gravitate towards the show I'm like okay wow I'm having a fucking an actual impact here, yeah, but it wasn't book. until the book came out and I was, and people started saying to me, yo, like my life was marked markedly changed. And I could, I could show you exactly like, here's my arms from six weeks before I read your book yeah. track marks, cutting myself. Here's, here's my report card. Cause I didn't go to fucking school because I was, I had such a bad fucking condition of anxiety or depression that I couldn't go to class. Here's my shit. Now this yeah. is me now. And it happened as a result of something you fucking produced. Yeah. That was the final yeah. straw for me. That was where like, right, right. that was where like any time there was a fucking Twitter, somebody said L plus ratio. Somebody said, somebody said anything. You're Logan Paul's friend. You're just a, yeah. It, I am bulletproof now. It Invincible. It does. It yeah, none of it, it fucking matters yeah. anymore because. So, damn, uh, we should write a book. You know what I'm saying? Because you produce something that stands the test of time. You have a work. You have yeah. a, a body of work that represents well, you as you. a f exactly. Yeah. I agree with that. I really do. I love that for you. I, I definitely, I agree. I saw such a change in who you are after the book came out. And I think that it's incredible. It's, it's a motivator within itself to show people to really like use your pain to hopefully try to help other people and you never know what it will do. Uh, you know what I mean? And that's, that is, that's my life's entire purpose. Maybe what I do isn't as meaningful as it could be. Maybe you're I'm not young. sitting you're here so teaching young, a lesson young. with everything I'm doing, but knowing I've ever potentially saved a life from any of my Absolutely. suffering or lessons is like why I do what I do and wake up every day at the end of the day. So I do feel that it's, it's definitely a motivator to have people go out there and, you know, do something with what you've been through or lived. Yep. And that's fire. I love I that. Will. We're supposed to write living proof too, bro. Come on, I love them. What's oh, living proof? Hair? hair products that are great. It's like in Sephora, okay. but I use them for free daily. <laughs> There's a big box of it for you. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I'm stoked. Um, we'll share. I share. Okay. I always get the urge to hit the reset button when the seasons change, especially when it comes to my beauty routine. This season, I'm trying to fix my fried off hair by styling it less and using products to help the heat damage and breakage. The good news, Living Proof has a reset button for every hair type and texture. Everything at Living Proof starts in their labs. Founded by a team of scientists and hairstylists, each product is scientifically engineered to solve the toughest hair challenges and never conceal them. There's no one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to hair care. Living Proof develops game-changing formulations that have raised the bar when it comes tailored to hair care performance. Unlike other hair care options, Living Proof addresses your specific hair needs and concerns like frizz, dullness, damage, and offers unique scalp care solutions. Because science in action equals your best hair. I often use Living Proof's intense moisture mask to fix the fact that my hair is literally falling out and balding from bleach. Not only do Living Proof's products deliver proven performance, but they also deliver on the promise of being silicone-free, sulfate-free, paraben-free, and phthalate-free, and never tested on animals. Living Proof products leave you with brilliantly beautiful hair that's cleaner, longer. Basically, it's been working overtime for me. Put science to work and unlock your best hair with Living Proof. Go to livingproof.com slash Tana and use code Tana to get 10% off your first purchase. That's livingproof.com slash Tana. Code Tana for 10% off your first purchase. Livingproof.com slash Tana. Code Tana. Thank you, Living Proof, for sponsoring today's podcast and my life for the past five years. Bro, it's funny because I, I knew today was going to be we would go like deep. I, I told her I knew it was going to be like that. I, I, it's kind of my yeah. new tip. I mean, I'll definitely yeah. switch it up. Y'all want to talk about some fucked up shit. I'm no, no. I, <laughs> I knew we would like go in and I that's what I wanted. I really wanted to come in today and just let you talk your shit about life and it be deep. But you really you really hit that 
And I'm happy. I'm really happy with today's episode. It's funny. We were just shooting an episode before this talking about sugar daddy. Literally and- like the least meaningful episode <laughs> and I'm of sitting all time. Here, I'm sitting here and there's like seven of us on this couch and we're just talking about like Lila sugar daddying in Vegas and awful. And I'm sitting there thinking Mike Malek's on the couch watching outside. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> I like, was I laughing was, at all of it. I thought it was great. I was just so he like had of, his time. Of he course, was our age. Of course, the That's one day one meaningful point. Mike comes in, though, <laughs> we're having the most awful episode of canceled ever to history no today. i like to remind people that like like we had we can we can like maybe talk about like human topics yeah i loved the ethan episode because it was like like kind of similar where he talked about like very like sometimes it's just me and tana being like shit or like yeah, yeah. but also oh, your well, fans love you for that too i mean i mean it's important and, and your to audience teach these lessons for that. okay no well, for sure like you for said sure. influence like no matter what we're going down this platform what like there we can throw in a meaningful episode it's not the end of the well, i hope world. i hope so i hope What's, somebody watching it was you know? Felt something. Who knows? Yeah. What's next for you? I feel like, can I make a prediction? What I think Absolutely. is next for you? Finding an intellectual property and or item in the food world. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's wrong? definitely part. It's definitely on the, I mean, if I, there's no one in our, in the camp that I reside within that could ever say what, and if you ask what's next for you, they would ever give you one answer. You know 100%. what I'm saying? We're, we're, it be that we're extremely diversified across multiple platforms, verticals, and, and I guess places. what's exciting and next, or like, what are you passionate about? I mean, about obviously, right now? the second book is, is unfortunately, you know, a, taking a li- is going to take a little while because I'm juggling a lot. It also is very scary to me to go back to a place where I have to write about stuff that makes me feel the way that that's writing true. makes me feel because it, that's, it, that's how true. you get to that place. Right. It's, it's yeah. fiery. It hurts a lot. That's what I'm doing. I'm getting like trauma, like therapy, like that makes you relive your trauma in order to write my book because I don't remember my life at all. Yeah. Like at all. I don't right. remember any of my life at Same, all. So I get that. I, like having uh, to go dark like that is hard. Right. So, so book two is one thing and just kind of working through that with the agency. Um, and then also any any potential for docu series or or stuff around book one. So we've had talks about movies. We've had talks about docu series. Movie was hint. Yep. I would watch it. And then um, and then obviously continues. Impulsive is going on the road. I think people probably no! already know that. Yeah, well, yeah, be... you toured, but is that going to be like a big long? Tour? Yeah, yeah, we're going to do a full tour. To we'll be in show. your city, hundred percent. So the agency's putting it together with a big. Uh, That's so exciting. Touring Canceled company on the road. I want that. That's a goal. But I mean, you guys Dude, are also three hundred episodes deep. Yeah, yeah you guys, so you guys are very deep. seasoned. And we've been yeah. forced to step our game up lately by a competitor, which has been great. And What's you know, shout out to the Full Sim Podcast, and they've been oh. crushing it. And and, you know, Kyle and Bob are doing a great job yeah. over there. Y'all gonna and, have Obama on or what? Yeah, you know, it's it's it basically just told us, hey, listen, like, um, you know, uh, maybe I'm biased, but I think that we probably are. We let's just put it like this: we've been doing it longer, yeah. and and you know, we but you never want to get comfortable. It's no, good no to have of a course not. But like but that, but know? I guess what I'm getting at is, you know, we we feel good about where the content is, but we just need to step it up with the guests a little. And and, yeah. and I, you know, really do. Hats I know off I did. To, to I just them. watched that. It was a great was episode. Really great episode. So impulsive on the road, book two, and then to to the food point. Uh, yeah, I I, I think I want a, a restaurant from you. I want like a Mr. I think, yeah, burger. within the next six to twelve months, I think we'll have brick and mortar burger restaurant. Really? Yeah. Uh, I love burgers. So exciting. I'm like, so. I love burgers. I love water. I love, I love, the, I love this bit for the podcast. Mike, Mike's like, yeah, I was just breathing. You're like, I love, I love breathing. breathing. Do you know how serious I take the burger shit? Like, it's not like, oh, I like, know. By, by the way, like. I just recently like tapped in. You tweeted like a list of a bunch of burger restaurants that you love. And I was like, oh, he's really, I'm like, like every well, well, people think, well, people yeah, think I that. I in and out that night. I was inspired. People think that like this is it's all you know Portnoy esque, which in a way it is. You know, I mean his his ratings. He's not obviously not the first person to rate reviewing? food, but like he's been doing it longer. Yeah, than that. and he you know he's been crushing the pizza stuff. But listen, I was I was doing I had a food blog in 2013. Mm-hmm. I've been taking pictures of food and talking about food to people. It is my passion. It is my literally ingrained in my soul. Yeah. And burgers were always the biggest topic, and the and the burger stuff started with Shake Shack Five Guys In and Out. The the age old debate around. Yeah. Can you what tell me your choice one? out of yeah, those three? I was, before yeah, I mean, you I mean, I, you know, I, I'm sure there's old Fantana being a West Coaster, but I've always been Shake Shack. Uh, Shake Shack first, Five Guys, then In and Out. And I can tell you why if you want, but tell me why Five Guys wins, and that's the only. No, right I'm answer. fine with that. Why. So I, I've always put Shake Shack and Five Guys in a kind of a very whoever you pick one. I just personally don't believe that In and Out is at the same. I level. don't think so. I think it's underwhelming, but Agreed. I'll still eat it. 
I'll, t- I'll tell you what. So, so, so I, I, I really like what Shake Shack does with uh, the consistency of their entire package. The, the potato bun is extremely soft. The, the, the burger semi decent quality, and the cheese is great. The Shack sauce is great, and the Shack burger and the fry, the, cr- the cr- uh, crinkle cut fries with the cheese sauce are incredible. So I put that kind of at the top. top. If I'm really hungry, I'll put Five Guys at the top. Very big burger, a lot of meat. You have the choice to de- to downsize the meat, but the original by itself is two burgers. The cheese is always really good. The sesame seed bun is good. And the fries at Five Guys are the best of the three. So the Cajun fries at, yeah, at Five Guys are incredible. Valid. Now, the deal with In-N-Out is this. It's a regional great. It's extremely affordable, which is amazing. I think a burger there's like $4 or something mm-hmm. like that, right? Um, I just, I, I, I think the fries... Sh- the, I think the fries should they not even be, be put style. out. I, I don't believe the fries should even be uh, released to the public. I think they should be put back into whatever cauldron of hell that they came from. Right back up in that and, potato and, cutter. And, and leave them. No, because they're not. Do you know what they're made of? What? They're not potatoes. They're, I, I assure you, I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart, they collect Barbie Playhouse boxes that the Barbie Playhouse is put think inside, I read that somewhere. Yeah. and they shred them up, and they they use the shredded Barbie Playhouse cardboard to create what is the shape the the In and Out French fry. Now, the way they make it acceptable to eat it is by topping it with so much shit: cheese, diced onions, uh, the and special you know sauce, what? and it it's works delicious. For me. And it's delicious. It's great. Don't get me but wrong. The fry itself, you think needs who's, prison? Who's the guy who does? No, needs to go back uh, to hell. Uh, Bronson. Needs wait, to die, dude. You know who I'm talking about? The like heavier set guy. Action Bronson. Yes, Action Bronson. Fuck, that's, that's delicious. That is my dream yeah, job. Yeah, he's amazing. He's a, have you ever it? seen it? No. It's like a show. Him and all his friends go. Basically, they travel and they're, they they like do like a video series, and it's just like that. It's a bun- bunch of funny people basically yeah. eating food, eating like amazing. You're a cultured food. little son of a gun, aren't it's, you? Oh, bro? it's my favorite. Favorite thing ever, and it's that to me. I, to I can't imagine a better we job. We start in the a world. food review show. Let's, I'm trying well, to tap in. I can't. But, but the anyway, thing is, they'll well eat just... anything. Like there's no, there's no cap. But they go and they talk to the people about like the culture, like everything behind it, like That's what fire. they're doing in the kitchen. Like it's, it's actually giving like, diners drive-ins and. But it no, is, no. So it, what it is, it's your Ashley Bronson show is incredible. Basically, what it is is the the somebody I see a lot of myself in, but I don't even like saying that because I'm so insanely humbled by his even living but anthony bourdain was one of the greatest humans on the fuck ever i mean this guy was fucking incredible he was he was extremely sharp extremely ahead of his time uh romantic with the way that he talked about food romantic with the way that he talked about travel and culture this guy was a a monster and for me you know east coaster ex-heroin addict, uh, someone that has continued to play, then not play with alcohol, someone who's had their problems with, you know, relationships. I mean, this guy, this guy, the, the amount of mirrors to myself I see in just his, oh. his um, de- shortcomings in life yeah. is incredible to me. But the fact that he also loved food, loved travel, loved culture. So the hole that Anthony leaves behind, has left behind, has always been something that I dramatically would love to fill. And yeah. and that's such a, t- I could never do that. Like he's, he's a, a but god. It's a but it's role. someone good to look up to. Like Correct. Yeah. 100%. Correct. So I that's like where I hope I could I see you do, like, doing that. I feel like that's, I don't know. You're well, so well spoken in the way that you explain so, things and describe. Overshooting. Honestly, no, no I think th- you're selling yourself short. I think a food show would hit. I do. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all? Don't we all sincerely? No, Five I'm guys, in and out or Shake Shack? I'm Five guys. Five guys first. Five guys. In and out first. In and first for me. Really? You're, you're a West Coaster. You're, you've been bred into that that belief. It's familiarity. It's a I regional it's great. So you know, there's great. people down south who would tell you, "Hey, now oh, I'm not doing accents." So. Hey, now <laughs> no, yeah, you almost you killed it. You 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 completely have forgotten about the actual greatest of the burger chains, and they'll say Whataburger. I and love I, Wait, I, I, I fuck I so hard with Whataburger. No, I don't know what you're. The if you're mustard. About to, oh. If you're about to slander Whataburger, just shut the fuck Dude. up. It is so good it, to but me. It, but it's, but, okay. But it's, I will, but it's, I, I it's, it's skip, comparable to McDonald's. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I, oh, yes, it's I giving will, Burger King Jack in the yes, box. So I will sure, skip yeah. the slander today, but to your point, yes, it should not. It, if anyone who ever mentions it in the same okay. sequence as those three is. Mistaken. You're right. I, I should agree. have let you speak. It definitely is more on the, on the wave of like the yes. McDonald's. But Jack anyone from like that. But, the South would disagree. It's crazy. <clears throat> I fuck so hard with the Whataburger, I swear to so God. So do I. The mustard on it could just fucking absolutely deck me in the face, mm-hmm. wind it up, and hit me. Wow, mustard. I'm starving. With all that being said, we're all about to go out. Yeah, Are we? Like Hide tonight? 
wherever you want to go. <laughs> I'm going to go find my wife there. <laughs> so you're, you're not finding your wife at Hyde. I know, I know. Yeah. I'm finding my wife at probably Air One. Air One. Or, or by the way, Lady And I'm West Coast of You're finding your wife at Air One. I'm, I'm not, not a fucking liberal. <laughs> Stop yeah. saying that. Are you not a fucking liberal? I'm not, dude. Wow. I, I oh, love... He's on Impulsive. What do you mean he's yeah. not a... <laughs> No, it, it, people think it's a very liberal program. No, I'm, a, I'm actually. A, no I'm, one thinks. No one, no one, no one thinks the polls do. are liberal. We've we've had our moments, but I'm I'm very. We're not doing politics today. Forget it. Okay, let's anyway, go. Anyway, let's fun. <laughs> Leave me out of the polls hey, and the politics and the politics. Sincerely, please. Thank um, you for having me on your show. I love. We you love having you. I think you're my favorite guest we've ever had. Is that rude to say to the other one? My favorite person we've ever had. <laughs> I'm sure, I will. It's say just that. an honor to be here, and I know you guys have a fiercely loyal audience, and I appreciate y'all watching the the episode today, and I hope that you could pull something that could help you guys in your own lives. Read his book. Read. Up, I'm gonna read. I haven't shift. read it. Yet. It's on Amazon. Dude. The Fifth Vital. <laughs> I'm sending it to my mom. I have known you for for forever, and I love our friendship. I think we really started with an off-camera friendship, which is rare out here, and we bonded a lot. You were giving me heaping praises on Jeff FM, and I just wanted to do the same thing for you here. Like, I, you were a great friend and a great person, and I love you to death. Thank and you, Tim. I appreciate you coming in and getting deep with us on Cancelled and giving the viewers something they don't get often, which is, you know, no slander, some wholesome <laughs> life lesson. Uh, like, sorry, like, for, like, centering you. Like, you know, seriously, yeah, the beef is over, and now we're all going to the club negating everything we just said <laughs> have an amazing night canceled listeners bye fan emotion is canceled a dwe talent production